Good afternoon. My name is Kendra White, and I'm the Senior Manager of Community Relations for UPMC for Life. We're here today for Episode 4 of our Staying in Touch series, Food as Medicine. Our series was devised to be here for you to help you stay connected and informed during this challenging time. We're happy that you've taken the time today to join us to hear from some of our experts in the fields of preventive medicine, mental and physical health, and other specialties. We'll keep you today for about 30 to 45 minutes. And before I introduce today's presenters, I want to start with a quick poll question for those that are listening on the phone. I want to know, are you motivated to make healthy eating changes? Press 1 for yes, press 2 for no, right on your telephone keypad. The question is, I'm motivated to make healthy eating changes. Press one for yes, press two for no. And I also wanna let our audience know, if at any time you would like to ask a question for our presenter, press star three on your telephone keypad to be connected to someone on our team who will take your question. And if you're on the online forum, you can simply type a question in that chat box. However, we ask if you are doing the online question that you provide us with your name and an email address or phone number next to your name so that we will be able to respond to you after this meeting. If we do not get to answer questions or your question on the live call today, we will be given a log of these questions and comments that will enable our team of professionals to follow up with you. We also, again, the series was devised for you. So we're curious if you have any other ideas for topics that you'd like to hear, you can indicate that as well, or press star three to talk with a live member of our team that can do that as well. So again, we're glad that you joined us. If you have questions that are specific for COVID-19, we have an excellent website with resources available, and that's upmchealthplan.com forward slash COVID-19. So without further ado, I have two phenomenal presenters with me today. Dr. Michael Parkinson. Dr. Parkinson is a senior medical director for UPMC Health Plan, and he's a national expert on health prevention and lifestyle medicine. Dr. Mike's background in family medicine and preventive medicine has provided him with a unique perspective on how our daily choices and environments impact how long and how well we live. He is a past president of the American College of Preventive Medicine. And as many of you will recall, he led our town hall series with me several years ago. So he's an expert in this, in this type of forum as well. So welcome, Dr. Mike. And we also have Janine Jones. And Janine has built a successful career in health coaching, nutrition, and diabetes education over the past 20 years in several different regions. As a registered dietitian nutritionist, and certified diabetes educator, she has provided medical nutrition therapy, counseling, and diabetes education in Ohio, South Florida, the Pacific Northwest, and Pittsburgh. She gained experience and developed a robust skill set in diverse settings such as large teaching research medical centers, small rural hospitals, Head Start programs, outpatient nutrition counseling, diabetes programs, and telephonic health coaching. Janine is currently a full-time health coach, diabetes educator at UPMC Health Plan, supporting healthy lifestyle change for UPMC Health Plan's members in weight management, nutrition, physical activity, stress management, diabetes prevention, and tobacco cessation. So again, I have, I have two excellent presenters today, and um, this is one of my favorite topics that Dr. Mike had done years ago. And I think that our listeners will really enjoy what these two have to say. So welcome, Dr. Mike and Janine. Thanks for joining me today. Well, Kendra, thank you very, very much. Uh, it's a great pleasure to be back with you and a particular pleasure to work with my colleague Janine here for the next half hour to, uh, to help address some of the misconceptions about healthy eating, uh, and also I would comment that this presentation is particularly relevant at a time of COVID-19 
concerns. Uh, the most important medicine that we take every day is, frankly, what you had for breakfast or not. Uh, far more powerful than most prescription medications, but even our physicians oftentimes don't know it. Uh, I will tell you that Gene and I actually do programs with our own physicians at UPMC to help them eat better and to basically live longer because here's the embarrassing part. As a medical school student, I got one hour of nutrition education. During a residency training, we typically don't get much more, yet it's the most important thing that our patients do every single day. So on a personal note, both with Janine working as a team, we've worked with everybody from pediatricians to surgeons on how they can improve what they eat. Well, the Staying in Touch series is just a wonderful way to you to sharpen your skills at this stressful time. Here's what we're going to be talking about today. Um, how does healthy eating really become the cornerstone of a healthy and long life? What are the health risks or many of the chronic conditions that you may have that are directly related to your diet? Not only are related to your diet, but you can actually improve or reverse with healthy eating. Uh, what is a healthy weight? And why is it important to have it or to strive to become healthier as it relates to our weight and BMI? What are some high-level tips for managing that weight? What are some high-level tips for eating healthier as well as some specific recommendations I'll make that you can think about and begin to implement this afternoon? I'll then turn the baton over to an expert on how we help individuals like you, your loved ones, your kids, your grandkids, to improve their knowledge and skills and deliver those skills in a way that improves their health. It's called health coaching. And Janine is a national expert and, as I said, a great partner. She will talk to you about our resources, how we deliver them, and other new developments that you can access for free as a health plan member to help you on the journey. And then finally, we'll take question and answers, as Kendra indicated uh, previously. We look forward to the dialogue. So. Let's start at the very beginning. Um, eating doesn't happen in abstract. It really is part of what I call a triangle, a powerful triangle of health of behaviors that I describe as what I eat, how I move, and what I think. That's pretty much it. If you eat a diet that is largely based in whole food, plant-based eating, if you move regularly each and every day, both physically through aerobic activity and through strength training, if you can do that twice a week. And if you can connect to people, uh, you have a passion in your life, you understand your stressors and can manage them with things like physical activity, things like mindfulness, things like connection with loved ones, things like healthy eating, you can eat, move, and think your way to better health. That happens whether you're at home, whether you're at school, whether you're in a workplace, or in your neighborhood. So think of those three things, eat, move, and think. We're going to talk today about healthy eating, but it's in the context of eating, moving, and thinking that you can optimize your health and actually reduce your reliance on prescription medications. Now, the health risks of a poor diet are unfortunately right in front of our eyes. Over the last 30 years, the American diet has deteriorated dramatically, meaning that more and more of our calories are coming from processed foods, added salt, added sugar, added fat in those foods, and increasingly from meat and dairy products. It's not the way I was grown up in the 60s and 70s. These foods didn't even exist when I was a child or I would hazard when you were children. But here's the cause of that poor dietary pattern called standard American diet, which really is sad. Heart disease continues to be the number one killer of Americans. Cancer, stroke, chronic respiratory diseases, accidents, diabetes, Alzheimer's disease, influenza, and yes, susceptibility to COVID virus. All of these are made worse when we have an unhealthy diet. So getting the diet right, and don't use the word diet, we use healthy eating pattern. That's critically important for you to begin to turn the tide, not only for yourself, for your spouse, for your kids and your grandkids. So the simple truth is that eating better makes you live longer, on average 10 years longer than people who don't eat a healthy pattern. 
And you can do more in your life with energy and vitality. What is striking to people is when they move to a predominantly plant-based eating pattern, they'll turn to you after a week and just say, I just feel better. I have more energy. I seem to be getting around quicker. And indeed, you're turning off a lot of the inflammation and a lot of the bad chemicals that actually come about from eating patterns that are unhealthy. Certainly, you lower your blood pressure. You improve your diabetes. Janine's is an expert on that. We can actually reverse diabetes with healthy eating. Type 2 diabetes, which is the most common type. Your cholesterol levels, your LDL cholesterol, your blood sugars, all of these improve when you start moving towards a plant-based eating pattern as opposed to the standard American diet. The cornerstone of every chronic disease, high blood pressure, stroke, diabetes, pulmonary disease, kidney disease, autoimmune disease, rheumatoid arthritis, Sjogren's syndrome, inflammatory, but I could go on and on. These diseases are inherently inflammation-based. Standard American diets create inflammation in your bloodstream and in your tissues all the time. Moving towards anti-inflammatory plant-based eating can not only improve your numbers, it improves the number of years you live and how well you live with a sense of vitality and joy. So what is this overall goal that we have in managing weight, and why is weight so important? Well, unfortunately, in western Pennsylvania, about 70% of us are overweight or obese. Knowing your numbers, knowing what is your height and weight, and knowing what is your BMI, and knowing whether or not you're in a healthy range or a relatively unhealthy range is an important starting point. You should know your blood pressure. Ideally, it should be below 120 over 80. You should be on medications and control it to certainly keep it below 140 over 90. You should know your triglycerides, your cholesterol level. Um, you should share your goals that you want to eat healthier and you'd like to lose some weight, if that's your goal, with your family and friends. We work better in teams. We work better when we have a support system. That's why coaching is so important. Janine will tell you how that works in a few minutes. And finally, remember the triangle? It's not just what you eat. It's taking that daily walk for 30 minutes to two hours. Get outdoors. Get that natural sunlight to activate your vitamin D. Socialize with people, albeit over the, over the phone or over the web during these difficult times. Those socializations actually improve your brain functioning, reduce stress, and reduce inflammation. Eat, move, and think, critically important. And when you do those three right, you will manage your weight. Very important to understand your weight and have a goal in mind. The cornerstones of uh, tips in uh, healthy eating are well stated by Michael Pollan almost 10 years ago now. What did he say? Eat real food, not processed food to the degree possible, right? Plant-based foods. Mostly plants, he said. And thirdly, not too much. Remember that portion sizes in our country are three times as big as they should be. A portion should fit in the palm of your hand, a deck of cards. That's it. So moderate the portions of food, and particularly those of high-calorie foods, where there's added sugar, added salt, added fat. You should be shooting for 10 servings a day of fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, and whole grains. Play that again, 10 servings a day. That's what people around the world who live the longest without these diseases eat. They don't eat two a day the way we currently do in western Pennsylvania. We eat around two, and the most common one is a French fry, which is a healthy potato dipped in nine calories of fat. That's unfortunately the most common vegetable that we eat, looking at hundreds of thousands of data sources that we collect in western Pennsylvania. Why plants? High nutritional value. They're low in empty calories, and they're high in microvitamins, antioxidants, micronutrients that reverse disease. If you're just eating processed foods, added salt, sugar, and fat, or animal-based products, you're not getting those antioxidants, anti-inflammatory compounds. They actually contribute to inflammation. So knowing how to prevent and reverse these health, heart, health conditions, like diabetes and heart disease, begins with a plant-forward or plant-oriented eating pattern. 
So what would I have you decrease, or in many cases, some of you could even completely eliminate? Many people actually who are vegan or vegetarian live longer or better than people who eat a standard American diet. So think about your consumption of meat, poultry, and seafood. Last year, Americans ate 220 pounds of meat per person in this country. Think of that, 220 pounds. 32 pounds were eaten of cheese, full calorie, nine calories per gram of cheese. In 1960, the average American ate eight pounds of cheese, and we wonder why 7 to 80% of us overweight. Sugar substitute and added sugars, you don't need them. Processed foods, alcoholic beverages, keep those in moderation, no more than one to two per day on average. Soft drinks or anything with added sugar, many juices are full of added sugar. So you don't need sugar-sweetened beverages. What do you replace them with? Fruits, vegetables, whole grains. Beans are very high in protein. You can get all of your proteins from plants. Um, All of those proteins are not inflammatory. Whole grain breads and cereals, nuts and seeds are very important for lowering cholesterol. Things like flax seeds, chia. And you can get milk-like products that are made from plants if you like that texture and taste of milk-based products. Those are some high-level considerations that I want to talk about. But the real experts in behavior change start with health coaches. And with that, what I'd like to do is I think, Kendra, we can hear from the first survey to tee up uh, Janine. And then, Janine, you've got the stick, as we said in my old employer, the Air Force. Kendra? Yes. Uh, Thank you, Dr. Mike. I love that. Eat, move, think. Those are some great tips. And before we hear from Janine, I want to remind everyone, if you have a question or a comment about what you'd like to see for future topics, you can press star three on your telephone keypad to be connected with someone from our team. And the results from our first poll, I'm motivated to make healthy eating changes, 92% said yes, and 8% said no. So it sounds like we have a, a, a Uh, a listener base that's willing and able to make some healthy eating changes. And before I turn it over to Janine, I have another poll question. After listening to Dr. Parkinson, I'm confident that I can plan healthy plant-based meals. I'm confident that I can plan healthy plant-based meals. Press 1 on your phone for yes and press 2 for no. That's one for yes, that you're confident you can plan healthy plant-based meals, and two for no. And with that, I would like to take it over to you, Janine. Thanks. Hi, everyone. Um, Glad to be here. And I can see the votes are coming in. And many of you are expressing some confidence with planning healthy plant-based meals. Some of you are not feeling so confident with making the changes. I understand it can feel overwhelming to make changes. And there's just so much choice and so much competing information about the best way to eat. Fortunately, there isn't just one good eating pattern. There are many different patterns. And It's really about finding the best way for you to eat healthy and for your family. So I really encourage individualizing all of the information you might be hearing and figuring out how to make small steps forward. And that's where health coaches can help. Uh, Health coaches and UPMC Health Plan Resources can help you identify your goals and plan for those small steps so that you can eat healthier. We can encourage enjoying all the foods and creating a lifestyle that really helps you thrive. It's nice to enjoy healthy eating, have tasty food, and meet your weight management goals. Sometimes it seems like those don't go together, but actually it can all go together really well. So what we can do is we can help provide support, increase motivation, work through the challenges that come up, like special occasions, holidays, or just all of the challenges right now with finding foods or being able to pay for all the foods that you need, and helping you also feel better about those inevitable flips that happen, 
changing perspective about those, and problem-solving triggers so that you can get back on track after a slip. Some of the resources we have are online. We have self-guided videos that are interactive, phone apps, and you can chat with a health coach. We also have workbooks and handouts. So we have many different resources available. Our resources are for various lifestyle changes. We also can personalize a program for you. So we have the weight management, healthy eating, reducing stress, and increasing physical activity. One of our programs is the Odyssey app, which you could download and get started with today if you would like. It's Odyssey by UPMC, available through the Apple Store or Google Play, and it's free for UPMC Health Plan members. Reaching a health coach by telephone or chat can also be a way of getting started with learning more about all of these different resources. So at this point, I also noticed a lot of questions coming in about special diets. And I just wanted to yes. men- mm-hmm. I wanted to mention that oh is that okay for me to address that? Yeah, absolutely. Go ahead. Oh thanks. We have health coaches that are clinical specialists. We have many health coaches that are dietitians. So it can be challenging if you're trying to eat healthy and balance special food restrictions that you've been given. So just like health coach know what your restrictions are and we'll help you find the resources and make those healthy changes. Um, Also, at this point, with it's always challenging to pay for healthy foods, but we can also support how to increase fruits and vegetables and plant-based eating without it costing more. So we can help you with those meal planning tips and strategies for following a healthy budget. Janine, I, I might great. weigh in here if that's okay. Kendra, is it okay to comment here on a couple of these? Sure, absolutely. Yeah, so Janine, I, I just want to follow on a couple of things. Uh, first of all, thank you all out there for forwarding these questions. And I, I can't tell you enough how much we value uh, your interest and how committed Janine and her team is to helping you navigate not only knowledge. Knowledge, you know, is uh, not adequate. You need skills. You need to know where to shop. You need to know what types of things to buy. And as I sometimes tell patients, what the heck is an avocado and how do you eat it? What, what do you do with those things? We have lost our knowledge of a lot of the basic skills that a generation ago our parents and grandparents just knew. So health coaching helps develop a lot of those skills and experiences with some very practical advice that will help you. But one of my pet peeves is the notion that, quote, unquote, healthy eating is expensive. Um, All the foods that we're eating excess amounts of are subsidized by the federal government, so they remain cheap. Uh, Added salt, added sugar, added fat, meat, dairy products are all subsidized by the federal government. The poor farmer who tries to raise a pepper or a squash or corn, take corn off the list, that's subsidized, basically has none of those subsidies. Uh, And oftentimes, by comparison, people think that chicken is a good deal, but that a green pepper is not. I encourage you to look at a series of videos by a colleague of mine, Dr. Jeff Novick, N-O-V-I-C-K. You can Google him online. For less than $4 a day, using a variety of very, very inexpensive fruits, vegetables, and whole grains you can buy in the store. They can be frozen. They can be canned. Just watch the salt. Uh, they're widely available, they're extremely inexpensive, and they're very high in nutrients and protein. Dr. Mike? I think we may have lost him. Janine, are you still with me? I am, yes, yes. Um, I wanted to mention that definitely if you would like to work with a health coach about food cost. It is and just budgeting for making healthy lifestyle changes. It's a very, very common um, concern, and we've helped 
many, many members with being able to eat healthy. And many are surprised. I think that's what um, Dr. Parkinson was hinting at. Many of the members I've worked with are surprised that actually their food costs go down as they're starting to eat healthier because they're buying less of some things and what they're purchasing more of as we, we provide support and, and information doesn't actually cost as much as they might have realized. Um, so, well, and I, I'm and glad that chime in on, on, on where he was going. I think, you know, in this day and age, we do eat, we tend to eat for convenience, and that's expensive. We don't, you know, he said eat, move, think. And I think the thinking part is making a plan and having goals. And so, you know, eating more vegetables and fruits, I mean, frozen fruits are, and vegetables are just as good as fresh, and they are a little more affordable for, for certain, you know, certain places. It just also depends on where you shop. But I think, you know, as a member, utilizing our health coaches is the right thing to do. There's no charge for it. It's an added benefit to your membership as a UPMC Health Plan member. And um, Janine, I think how can they connect with a, with the health coach? Is it something that they can, you know, you can download this app to connect with one, but you can also, if you, if you want to start the process by a phone call, would you recommend them calling the healthcare concierge? Yes. I think at this time that would be a good way to go would be contact the healthcare concierge or um, through actually the, I believe the support I would say healthcare well, concierge just, for now, yes. <laughs> okay, yeah, for now. And and I also want to mention um I have one more poll. I it seems like one of our platforms went down, so I apologize. Uh we're having a few technical difficulties, but if you're still with us, I want to know if if after talking with or hearing from Janine Jones, do you plan to try to eat fruits, vegetables, and whole greens, whole grains more each day this week. If you're going to give that a try, press one for yes and press two for no. You're planning to integrate some more fruits, vegetables, and whole grains each week. Press one for yes and press two for no. And I also want to mention these presentations are recorded. We do have them available on our website, our website uh, that we have enacted during this time of, of the COVID pandemic, um, has a wealth of community resources, how to connect with these health coaches, fitness benefits, and more information. And that website is upmchealthplan.com forward slash in touch. That's upmchealthplan.com forward slash in touch, where you can find the slides and the embedded uh, uh, recording from our previous talks. As I said, this is number four. We are going to continue these talks in the weeks to come. Next week, we will have two, um, How to Cope with Depression will be next Tuesday at noon, where we'll have Dr. Uh, Dr. Lindra Bills and Dr. Richard Silbert will talk with us about how to protect your mental health and how that enhances your physical health and immunity. They will discuss factors that raise your risk for depression, important warning signs for when you need help, and how to keep a positive mood. And then on Thursday, we'll have a, an additional talk. And then the following week, we're going to move to having these once a week. So we're hoping to, you know, let your, your friends know, other people, community, you can certainly promote this. It's not just for members. It is, you know, information that we're trying to keep everyone connected with during this time in our society. So I would like to hear from you if you you know, obviously, uh, we're getting towards the end of the call today, but you can press star three to talk with someone live if you have a question. And if you have an idea for a future topic that you'd like to hear or learn more about, uh, you can do that or you can certainly give us a call. Your healthcare concierge is a wealth of information and can connect you to our resources for life team, our clinical team, our health coaching team. Um, you know, we're just, we wanted to do this series so that you understand we're, we're here for you during this time. We're open for business, business as usual, and our, our business is serving our members and protecting their health and well-being. So I appreciate everyone. Um, 
Oh, no, Dr. Mike's I, back. Thank yeah, you. I am so sorry for those on the call, and it's just that's what you do when you don't get to pay your phone bill, guys, right? <laughs> um, yeah. Well, I, but I, I did want to be where you were, were going there. Yeah. yeah. No problem. I just wanted to say, uh, as I see a couple more questions here, some of you have read Neil Barnard's book. He's a colleague of mine. He was just in Pittsburgh speaking to numerous national researchers uh, around the evidence for these types of patterns of eating, as Janine said, uh, it's not one size fits all, but the more we can move towards understanding what are the drivers of uh, being overweight and inflammatory-based diseases, that will help. Uh, I really think that, uh, to Kendra's point, um, UPNC Health Plan offers you more resources and support than, frankly, anything I've ever seen. And I really would encourage you to take advantage of the means, the team, our Odyssey app. Ask hard questions. We'll try to support you as best we can. It begins with what you eat, you know, what I eat, how I move, and what I think. So I apologize for having a little technical glitch there. And uh, as Kendra said, I'm sure we'll get back to you. So, Janine and Kendra, I'll turn it back to you. My apologies for the technological glitch. Well, no, no problem. I think a few of us have, have experienced that in the past. So I appreciate you joining back. And I, um, we did get some really great questions. And what we, we try to avoid answering personal questions or, you know, about symptoms or diseases. So as I said, we will follow back up with you. You should expect a call from someone today or early tomorrow. We get those lists from our our wonderful vendor here that has provided this technology platform. And we will follow up with you again and I appreciate all of your time and um, you know, just staying connected. We want, we want to, we're here for you. We have a wealth of, of resources. And, and like Dr. Parkinson said, I've, I've blessed every day to be surrounded by such professionals in the field. And, you know, at the, at the heart of it is serving our members. And, you know, we really have your best interest in mind. Um, even though we did the call at lunchtime about food, I think, <laughs> I think making healthy choices is, is what it's all about. And we appreciate your time today. I, um, I see a few people are still in the screening box, so we can leave this open until those are complete. But at this point, unless there are any, any further comments from uh, Dr. Parkinson or Janine, do you have anything that you'd like to say in closing? I would like to just say that you can do it. Uh, don't believe what you've been told in many cases. Work with our coaches and take those small first steps. You'll be surprised how much better you feel and tell your doctor what you're doing. You'll probably have some reduction in your prescription medications. In many cases, as much as I love my colleagues, uh, we weren't well trained in the types of things that Janine is trained in, and there's no embarrassment in that. So uh, make food your first medicine every day. Janine? Yeah, that's great. Saying, I would, thanks. I would summarize basically the same thing, saying just as you take possibly small quantities of medications for your health each day, small quantities of healthy foods throughout the day are important for health. And I always think of it as a healthy dose of plant-based foods three times a day can manage conditions, and that includes the colors, the fiber, the healthy fats, the protein, the water, the vitamins and minerals, and that's what helps the body heal, recover, and thrive, and it boosts the immune system and manages many of the common diseases. And, and again, like I said, you don't have to do it alone. You, whether you think, oh, I can't afford fresh fruits and vegetables, make a plan. We're here for you to make that plan. And that's why what Jean, Janine promoted, our health coaches are so valuable. So please, if you've never connected with one, you know, now is, is just as good a time as any to start making a plan to feel healthy because it's, you know, eat, move, think. And I, the, the think is just planning, making a plan and setting some goals for yourself to, you know, eat healthier, feel healthier, and, and be healthier. Whether you're, you know, in, a, in at home, safe at home, or, you know, back, back out and out into the world. It's, it's all important. It's always important. So I appreciate your time today. And uh, again, we look forward to talking with you all on Tuesday. Thanks, everyone.